In my Daily Dozen checklist, I recommend everyone eat a daily tablespoon of ground flax seeds. But you may have heard that flax seed contains cyanide. What? I mean, is that anything to worry about? Watch this video to find out. Sweden's dietary guidelines are pioneering in many ways. For example, encouraging people to decrease their climate impact by choosing more plant-based foods, which tend to produce greatly fewer greenhouse gas emissions. But I was surprised by this page on the official Swedish National Food Agency website, which translates to cyanogenic glycosides and hydrogen cyanide, encouraging people to stay away from ground flaxseed for fear of cyanide toxicity, as in the ground flax seeds I encourage everyone to eat every day. You can see why this was the first question I got when I spoke in Stockholm. Was the Swedish government onto something? Had I just been duped by big flax-funded researchers who claimed you could eat pounds of ground flax seeds a day without worrying, more than 150 tablespoons a day? First, some background. As many as one in five plants that we eat produce cyanide. In fact, if you look at the major food crops in the world, more than half are cyanogenic, meaning cyanide-producing. Um, see, unlike toxic elements like lead, mercury, arsenic, that can't be broken down into anything, cyanide is an organic molecule, one carbon atom attached to one nitrogen atom. In this state, it can definitely be toxic, but broken down or complex to something else, and it loses its toxicity. And we have an enzyme in our body that does just that, a cyanide detoxifying enzyme. And that's just one of five main ways our body can detoxify cyanide. It does require protein to do it, though, and so that's why you can read about chronic cyanide toxicity among malnourished populations in Africa trying to live off of improperly processed cassava root. Uh, but as long as we're getting adequate protein in our diet, our body can detoxify the normal amounts of cyanide we eat every day. Now, there's a rare congenital a genetic condition called Leber's disease, where you're born without the ability to detoxify cyanide, and indeed, yeah, you, you could go blind drinking apple cider or something, but otherwise our bodies evolved to be cyanide detoxifying machines. But, I mean, obviously there's a limit. For example, a case of cyanide poisoning after bitter almond ingestion, not regular almonds, which produce about 40 times less cyanide, but bitter almonds, which you can't even buy. They're used in like flavor manufacturing. But if you did, I mean, eating 50 of them could kill you, or even just a handful for a small child. This suggests that eating 2,000 regular almonds at one sitting could also be bad news. You can't buy bitter almonds, but you can buy apricots. And apricot kernels, which are the seeds inside the stone, actually have pretty toxic levels, and have indeed been implicated in cases of severe cyanide poisoning, all linked to the laetrile cult of cyanide, promoting poison for profit that I talked about previously. So I'm totally sympathetic to regulators wanting to take a precautionary approach. But are flax seeds like bitter almonds, where just a few ounces could kill you, or more like regular almonds, where you know, regular dietary intake wouldn't even come close? Although the fact that flax seeds can produce cyanide sounds like it would be a significant health concern, it's not, for several reasons, says flax industry-funded scientists. First, the adult human body has the ability to detoxify up to 100 mg of cyanide a day. That's where they come up with their pounds of flax seeds a day are safe number. And if you want to eat more than those totally unrealistic 150 tablespoons a day, you could just eat them in baked goods, since cooking destroys the cyanide, and eating 7 or 8 tablespoons of raw doesn't even bump urinary thiocyanide levels, which is an indicator of cyanide exposure, so it doesn't even look like your body's even exposed to it. Thus, the toxicity of flaxseed from cyanogenic glycosides is not, evidently, a realistic health threat. OK, let's unpack that. The cooking part is mostly true. Yes, baked muffins with even like a quarter cup of ground flax each for 15 to 18 minutes at about 450 degrees Fahrenheit in the cyanide-forming compounds are gone. Looks like the same thing happens with baked bread, but baked ground flax seeds on their own and even an hour at 350 only wipes out 20%, uh, though baking them whole wipes out 80%. And what, baking in bread or muffins wipes out 100%? How does that make any sense? It's the moisture. It's heat 
plus water that wipes out the cyanide. Boiling for just five minutes can wipe it out, uh, like when making hot cereal or something. And so yes, it's true in most cases that cooking eliminates the cyanide compounds, because you know, it typically starts out in a batter, you know, as an egg substitute, or baking crackers, or the dough you know, starts out moist. And so yes, in those cases, the cyanide is gone upon cooking. But you can't just spread ground flax seeds on a baking sheet, because they dry out so fast that only a minority of the cyanide is lost. But look. Why does it matter if your body doesn't even seem to notice seven or eight tablespoons of raw? But that's not true. Urinary thiocyanide excretion doubled at that level, though that's just a sign your body is actively detoxifying it. And if we can detoxify a kilo worth of flax a day, what's the problem? Well, look, even if the adult human body has the ability to detoxify up to 100 mg of cyanide a day, first of all, look, kids eat flax too. Second of all, a kilo has more than the 100 you said we could detoxify, about 50% more, and I'm not interested in how much we can detoxify up to. For safety, you're interested in the worst-case scenario, not the best-case scenario. Would someone please just give people different doses of flax seeds and just measure how much cyanide ends up in their blood? But that's never been done until now, which we'll cover next. Flaxseed pack a nutritional punch, and as a bonus, the release of cyanide from flaxseed is below a toxic lethal dose. Well, I should hope so. Back-of-the-envelope type calculations has led industry-funded scientists to assert that a person would have to consume eight cups of ground flax seeds at a time to achieve acute cyanide toxicity. I'd feel better, though, if it was actually put to the test. Researchers tested flax seeds under worst-case scenario conditions with respect to resulting in higher cyanide levels in the blood. So, one, locate the flax seed with the highest level of cyanide-forming compounds you can find. Uh, so they went to stores and bought 15 different sources of flaxseed, and though the average level was 140 mg per kilo, which is about typical, they did find one with 220, so they used that one. Two, maximal mechanical destruction to release the most cyanide, so they used some crazy 20,000 RPM lab grinder. Three, eat it all at once on an empty stomach, and then keep the stomach empty and they give it raw, since cooking can often wipe it all out. If the recommended daily dose is like one or two tablespoons of ground flax seed a day, I recommend one in my daily dozen checklist, they decided to go with four and a half tablespoons. OK, so what happened? The range of cyanide blood levels that one might estimate to possibly be associated with the clinical symptoms of intoxication would be like mm, 20 to 40. So that would be like here or higher, where, where we want to stay below. So 4.5 tablespoons on an empty stomach of the highest cyanide-containing ultra-ground raw flax seeds they could find, and the highest individual level rise was just under 14, and the average was down around 6. I mean, there has to be some amount of flax that takes you over the limit, though, so they tested 9 tablespoons and 15 tablespoons too. Remember, we start to worry at around 20 to 40. Three and a half teaspoons of raw, high cyanide ground flax on an empty stomach, hardly a blip. Uh, seven teaspoons at a time, same thing. 14 teaspoons, which is four and a half tablespoons, and there's that six. OK, but what about a little over nine tablespoons? That's over a half cup at a time, and that does start skirting toxicity. And finally, what about a whole cup? I don't even know how you'd eat a whole cup at once, but, but that is too much, putting you in that potential toxic range for about three hours. So much for the industry's eight cups at a time are safe, uh, but even in this worst-case scenario situation, one cup raw in an empty stomach, the highest dose they could find, that person still didn't actually have any clinical symptoms. Uh, this is consistent with the fact that you know, the, there's not a single published report of cyanide poisoning after consumption of flax seeds anywhere in the literature. Even from Swedish health spas, where they evidently give up to 12 tablespoons as a fiber shock. Usually high doses are like you know, two or so tablespoons three times a day, and this dose would be safe with respect to possible acute toxicity of cyanide. OK, but what about any possible chronic toxicity? 
The World Health Organization has something called a PMTDI, the Provisional Maximum Tolerable Daily Intake. It's defined as the amount you can eat safely every day for the rest of your life, without risking uh, any adverse health effects, uh, based on the best available data, though often that's just like rat studies, as it was in this case. If you put varying doses of cyanide, in the drinking water of rats for a few months at a certain level, the so-called benchmark dose lower confidence limit, there's a 10% increase instance of the shrinkage of the tail of the epididymis, which is where sperm is stored in the testicle. Um, that happens at the human equivalent of about 150 tablespoons of flax seeds a day worth of cyanide, um, but they want to err on the side of caution, so they introduce a hundredfold uncertainty factor to create the PMTDI. So instead of 150 tablespoons of flax seeds a day, the average American should stick to under 1.5 tablespoons a day if you're going to eat them every day. So my tablespoon a day daily dozen recommendations should be safe by any of these standards.